What's up guys, this is my camera comparison of the new iPhone 11 Pro versus the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. This is the front facing video camera, both recording at 4K. How does the video look on both? I love that both of them can record 4K video on that selfie cam. This is nice. Now this is just a little stabilization test. How does it look? I'd say both have similar stability here while walking. And let's go for a quick little jog and see how they compare. Then when I pick up the pace, I'd say the Samsung is clearly looking smoother, though it has a little bit of unfortunate jerkiness and stuttering, while the iPhone is just pretty shaky. It looks like the iPhone has a slightly wider field of view, and that HDR looks really good on the iPhone, maintaining some of those crazy bright clouds up in the sky. The Samsung brightens up my face, which is nice, but is blowing out those highlights in the background. Which one do you like better? We're out here, it's beautiful sunny at the lake, but it's super bright, harsh lighting conditions. Which one is doing better job at exposing my face, plus those bright skies and clouds? And while we're here, let's do a quick audio test. This is the iPhone 11 Pro, and this is audio on the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. How does the audio sound and compare? Let's live authentic. How does the audio sound and compare? Let's live authentic. And even though they both sound good, I think the iPhone sounds louder and a bit more clear. Now before we jump further into video tests, which are my favorite like 4K and stabilization, let's do some quick photo comparisons. First, snapping a couple wide angle selfie shots. The iPhone looks a tad wider field of view. Both have great colors and pleasant looking saturation and contrast. As the sun shines directly on my face, the skin tones look a bit more natural on the Samsung. Now backlit by the sun, funny the Samsung missed the autofocus and both expose my face a bit too dark, but nice clarity maintained up in the sky. And a couple portrait shots here, still on the selfie camera. This shot I like on the iPhone better, it's much brighter overall. Both are doing a nice job with edge detection and cutout. Interestingly, the Samsung now maintains that wider field of view, which I like to see. In this last one, both look really nice and sharp, and I would honestly take either, though my eye is drawn to that slightly punchier image on the iPhone. Now switching to the rear facing cameras, each phone has a triple camera system, an ultra wide, a medium wide, and a telephoto lens. First things first, both of these cameras, I don't care what anyone says, they each look really good in their own right, and they can produce some incredible shots. Let's all remember these are cell phones with tiny little cameras squeezed inside. The versatility of having a triple lens setup at three different focal lengths is amazing. And honestly, that ultra wide is my personal favorite. It creates this immersive shot, making you feel like you're right there in the scene. Both iPhone and Samsung have fantastic HDR processing, keeping incredible amounts of details in the highlights and shadows. The sharpness and clarity in those tiny details is fantastic as well. When I was out shooting these side by sides, this was the first camera comparison test I've shot in a long time that I was equally and super impressed with the results on both. We need to take this as great news for us consumers. This way, whether you prefer iOS or Android ecosystem, you can still have a great camera always on you, right in your pocket at all times. In a few low light shots, the iPhone looks warmer and the Samsung has a cleaner white, more accurate white balance. Even for sharpness and noise processing, I think the Samsung takes it here. But then, when switching off all the lights and going uber dark, both cameras have this night mode, and I think the iPhone wins in this test. It has much brighter images, which I like, however, it comes at the cost of softer details, while the Samsung is looking sharper. Here's a few portrait blur shots on the rear facing lens, and I personally like the contrast and color punch on the iPhone. Its HDR looks really good, and though the Samsung has nice natural colors, it's blowing out the highlights too often. I always like to do at least one pixel peeping zoom in shot and crazy how similar the clarity is on each of these when zoomed in 400%. I'd say the Samsung looks just a little sharper in my opinion, but it's pretty dang close. Now let's switch over to some more video tests. Make sure you're watching in 4K if possible to spot all those tiny little differences. This is 4K 30 on the rear facing cameras, both on ultra wide. Now it's nice, we each have a triple camera setup on both. 
So this is the ultra wide on both. And now let's punch into the medium on both cameras. One thing I see right off the bat, the grass details on the iPhone look a bit sharper over the Samsung. And now let's jump to the telephoto on both these cameras. When punching into the telephoto lens, the stabilization looks pretty good and similar. Check out the bright white feathers on the Swan. The Samsung is blowing out those highlights again, while the iPhone is maintaining that HDR. Though it's at the cost of color rendition, the Swan in real life looks a bit more clean white and less brown. When the Swan came over close, just look at those insane water droplet details on the iPhone. It's pretty impressive. Now this is video 4K on the rear facing ultra wide cameras. How does it look and how's the walking stabilization? Both are looking pretty smooth on the ultra wide. Going for a quick little jog. Four quick thoughts here. They both are looking pretty shaky and the iPhone's dynamic range is again looking really good up in the sky. But it's at that cost of the flickering effect which looks pretty terrible. One positive note for the Samsung, my face has a brighter exposure and good skin tones overall. Now I took a quick poll on my Instagram showing this test and very interestingly, so many people actually voted for the Samsung. Now I'm not sure if it's because it's overall brighter or more stable video, which is awesome, but very few recognize that improved HDR on the iPhone, which really surprised me. Maybe the average person cares less about the HDR and would rather have just a brighter image overall if this was a blind taste test, would it be the same results? Very interesting nonetheless, and let me know your thoughts down below. Now let's jump to the medium lens on both of them and do a little bit of walking stabilization. I'm pretty surprised here, and on the medium lens, the iPhone is actually looking a bit more stable over the Samsung. And going for a quick little jog. Again, 4K 30 on each. In the jogging, they both are honestly doing a great job, overall stabilizing all that jiggle and wobbles from my shaky hands. I like to look up at the trees, lots of tiny little details, again viewing at 4K, which one looks to be having a little bit sharper image. Or also dynamic range, it's super bright and contrasty out. Which one looks to be exposing for the bright skies and highlights, but then also the dark shadows here under the tree. Let's quick rewind and see that crazy bright sun. The circle is quite a bit smaller on the iPhone over the Samsung. I also think, of course, they both produce some crazy impressive sharpness and clarity here in 4K video. I have to give just a few extra points over to the iPhone as there's a little bit more clarity in those leaves and in the tree bark, for example. And, and jumping, jumping to the, the telephoto on each. The telephoto looks nice on both and another repeating theme. The iPhone has slightly darker shadows while I sort of prefer those brighter shadows on the Samsung. However, a lot of this comes down to personal taste. Autofocus on the iPhone's looking good and again the autofocus on the Samsung is just glitched out. It's super weird. And of course if I tap on screen, well sure it'll grab the autofocus but not how it's supposed to work. If any of you guys are having the same autofocus delays or glitches on your Note 10, let me know down in the comments. Let's go for a little digital punch in on both. Again, that Note can go way farther in, but it gets really pixelated. So to match the iPhone, somewhere around there. Wow, and clearly in this digital zoom, the iPhone is looking both more stable and better clarity. Now on this test, both cameras are recording at 1080-30. On the Note 10, it has the special super steady mode. And then on the iPhone, I just stepped it down to 1080, where basically you're able to get better stabilization. So how do the two compare in this simple walking stabilization test? While I definitely prefer the wider field of view on the Samsung here, the iPhone is cropping in quite a bit more. Which one is looking more steady to you guys? Let me know in the comments below, and let's go for a quick little jog. As a nice little tip, I recommend you keep an eye on the horizon in the background. It acts as a great reference point for stabilization, and I think the Samsung clearly wins in this test. Both cameras can record slow motion at 1080p, 240fps, and here's a sample clip for you. 
I think the Samsung is over sharpening or pixelating a little too much while the iPhone looks a little too soft in my opinion. Did you see that glitch here on the Samsung? Either way, slow motion is always fun and Samsung also offers a super slow-mo at 960 FPS for just 0.4 seconds. And quality isn't great, but it's a lot of fun to experiment with. And this is a quick audio zoom test on these two cameras. Let's set it down and switch to the telephoto lens. And this is audio on the zoom audio feature on both cameras. How does audio sound? iPhone 11 Pro. Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, audio test one, two, three, four. While scooting around the lake during sunset, the colors and saturation look really pleasant on both cameras. Interestingly enough, in these lower light conditions, I'd almost say the Samsung is now looking a bit sharper in those tiny details over the iPhone. This trend continues and is confirmed in the ultra low light video. The sharpness looks better on the Samsung while the iPhone just looks pretty mushy. And this is 4K 30 on each low light video on the ultra wise on both. And now let's punch into the medium on both. The iPhone's dynamic range looks great in those highlights, but producing a tad warmer results, while a Samsung again has more accurate clean white balance. And again, in those dark shadows, the iPhone might be trying hard to denoise the image, yet resulting in much softer details. The Samsung has a bit more noise, but sharper details. Then in telephoto, these same results are just magnified and confirmed. One thing I want to make sure to mention, in these ultra wide angle lenses, there's of course going to be some lens distortion around the edges of frame like seen here. So try to keep your main subject in center frame if you don't want them to be stretched. And secondly, the outside edges often have a bit more softness to them. And I think it looks a bit more soft and stretched on the iPhone over the Samsung. If you like this video, consider sticking around for lots more camera tests coming soon and let me know all your thoughts or questions down in the comments. Until next time, let's live authentic.